misters. So generally we have two different groups of the misters, uh, NTC and PTC. So the difference between these two groups is that NTCs they will have a negative temperature coefficient and PTC will have a positive temperature coefficient. Um, so if we're going to draw this, it's going to look something like this. So just a quick little chart here. So we have resistance here and we have temperature here. So if, uh, a PTC uh, thermistor could look something like this. PTC. So starts out at a lower resistance at a lower temperature and then as the temperature rises uh, the resistance will go up and NTC is just exactly the opposite. So it will start out at a higher resistance and as the temperature rises the resistance will go down. PTC thermistors are often used for example for current limiting so you can use it as a protection many multimeters etc have uh, PTCs um, on their inputs for, for limiting them and typically something like polyfuses then typically it will look more like this so you will have its fairly constant resistance uh, in the PTC and then you will have a sharp rise at a certain temperature so you know that uh, the current is going to be limited and it's going to protect uh, whatever input output uh, you're using uh, this PTC for. Okay, so what I have here is a couple of examples of um, NTC thermistors. If I get a camera to focus here, I think you can see those here. So they are quite different. They are designed for two completely different purposes. This is a very large uh, disk type, and what we have here is a 10K um, NTC thermistor. So it's typically used for temperature measurements. So it will have a reasonably well controlled change of resistance uh, over temperature. So you can actually get a reasonably accurate uh, temperature measurement uh, using one of these. This one here is typically used for limiting inrush current. So power supplies, for example, if you have uh, large capacitors uh, for filtering, you can put uh, one of these uh, in series and the inrush current will be limited. Anyway, the reason I want to talk about thermistors is because I had a small problem recently that was solved using thermistors. So let me do a quick demonstration. So I'm just going to take a piece of wood here and we can take one of our thermistors here and take our multimeter. I think you can see that. that one and connect it up here. So this thermistor I have here, so I believe that should be 120 ohm at 20 degree Celsius, I think. Uh, it might be a little bit warmer here, but anyway. Let's see if we can get this. Just sit nicely. Okay, so you can see uh, it's a little bit more than 20 degrees here. If that was at 20 degrees, it's 120 ohm. Anyway, so it's 94 ohms right now. And if we try heat it up, so I'm just going to take my hot air here. So it's on a very low setting, uh, 100 degrees. So you can see here as I heat it up, the resistance goes down quite, quite drastically. So this one will end up something like... Um, half an ohm I think at about 100 degree Celsius something like that so that's how it works so if I stop stop heating it here and it starts cool down again then we can see the resistance starts rising again 
So anyway, let's cut to uh, a small problem I had recently where I used a Thermista to solve it. Okay, what we have here is a switch mode power supply. So this is rated for uh, 20 volts at 4.5 amp. So quite capable. And we have a spindle here with a DC motor. This is only it's a 24 volt motor, and it's rated for something like 50 watt uh, under load. And we have a small uh, step up converter here should be able to handle plenty of wattage and we have a switch off on here so just goes from the power supply to the step up converter it's just to give some basic uh, speed regulation of the spindle here and because this is only 20 volts this will be able to supply up to 30 something volt and on off and goes to the spindle. So let's see what happens here when I switch it on. So there's a green LED here, I hope you can see it, kind of indicating the power supply at all. Okay, I can see the green LED here, see a red one over here. So all I need to do is just release the emergency stop here and the spindle should start running. But no, unfortunately not. It just spins a little bit and then the protection circuit of the uh, switch mode power supply just switches off. It just kicks in and says, no, I'm not going to drive this motor. Even though this should never consume more than maybe two amps uh, at max and maybe with DC-DC converter here, maybe two and a half amp out of this rated for four and a half amp. So what's going on? Well, let's try set a meter. So I'll just set that up. Okay, so I've added uh, an amp scope meter uh, in series with the DC motor here. So after it comes out of here, it goes to the switch and goes through the amp meter here and goes to the DC motor. So let's try again and see if we can capture here what's going on. Okay, there we have it. So I hope you can see that. So we actually have, this is on five amp per division range. So we can see we go up to more than 10 amps here for maybe five milliseconds. And protection kicks in here and says, no, I'm not having this. This is way too much. I'm only rated for four and a half amp. So. That's probably good. If you had a linear power supply, you wouldn't have this problem. Uh, linear power supplies will generally just deliver until they die. Uh, but as it's only in rush current for the motor here, uh, it wouldn't be a problem because after maybe 50 or 100 milliseconds, the motor will start spinning and the current is just gonna drop down to much, much, much lower than the in rush current. So let's try add some of these NTC thermistors here in series with the load. So I'm just going to do two in parallel because these are probably 120 ohm is a little bit too high. It will take a long time uh, for the resistance to go down. Oh well, it will take several seconds. So just take two in parallel here and let me try connect this and then we'll have a look again. Okay. I've added the two thermistors in series with the motor here and we switch back on. So let's try it again. And we can see the motor just starts up fine. And we can see the current draw here. Well. It's very, very low. It starts up really, really slowly. Even it takes a few seconds before the motor starts running. So, of course, if that's a problem, it's worth considering uh, maybe different size of thermistor here. So these are going to get pretty hot, but um, you can fine tune the thermistors to the load and the wall 
is a pretty good solution. So an alternative to using thermistors would be something like a power resistor and a relay that will short out the power resistor after a certain amount of time, but that will require a lot more circuitry, at least some transistors and capacitors, resistors, etc. So overall this is a this is a pretty good solution. The downside to it is that the thermistors will get very hot. So it's worth keeping that in mind. Don't keep them too close to anything. Uh, keep the leads uh, reasonably long. And another issue can be that if you start um, the motor, you stop it, and then you quickly start it again, then these will remain hot and pretty much guarantee the uh, protection circuit of the power supply will kick in again and you will have higher inrush current. So this is not a problem in this use case but it's worth considering. So anyway, enough for this little demonstration. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're going to have a nice day. Thanks for watching.